I know that my roots are blue and the rest of my hair is too. I was a little bit overexcited about um, toning my hair to white again and now it's blue. We work that out. And again, I mean it's summer, I have to open the window, but there are so many birds, they're so loud, I can't make them shut up, you just have to deal with that. Late to the party, but better late than never. Um, what a year so far when it comes to makeup, because there is just so much stuff that came out, or um, not only came out, but that I tried this year so far, um, that is just... I have here for you my top 13, I know a very odd number, 13 products that I've used so far this year that just blew my mind. That is, that is like mid-year favorites. Let's go. It's not a specific order because I have them laid out all here in front of me and I'm just grabbing and telling you what. Um, I did cheat in some categories because it's not a specific like shade or whatever. It's like um, the brand or like this type of product that just knocked me off my socks. So let's start with the newest one. Um, this came out last year. Um, this is the Isamaya Beauty Skin Lock, and I use underpainting glow primers always. So, like for the complexion, I always I have my primer, then I go in with a concealer, and then I do my eyes, and then I use a like glow underpainting thing, like the Hollywood Flawless Filter, or the Fenty Ease Drop, or new to that little family of now six different uh, products like that. The Isamaya Skin Lock. This is technically a serum, like you can incorporate this in your skincare routine, no problems. But I like to use it actually between foundation, uh, between primer and foundation. This is the definition of gloss skin. If you so for my whole face, I like you know there is a dropper on there, and I basically fill that dropper like all the way up with one pinch, and then I drop it into the mixing plate, and that's all. But if I want to have like Korean gloss skin, I take two. That is, that is just an insane glow that you get. And um, I, um, I don't know if it's up yet or if I deleted the footage because I'm not happy with it because this was the second time that I tried it. But I tried to film a short one minute review on this. Um, if I uploaded it, you definitely have to go back and watch it. If I didn't, I just want to repeat what I said there. The texture of this is like sperm, um, just to get that out of the way. It's really weird, but it's so good. But the <laughs> the thing that you're uh, like smearing something onto your face that um, that feels like sperm, let's be honest, <laughs> that fits the whole bondage life. I don't know what it is, but that is so clever. Just everything makes so much sense that Isamaya does. and. Um, I have done a whole video and deep dive on Isamaya, a French and the Isamaya beauty brand um, on the new products. I did uh, some really cool, or uh, one really cool look with the Industria 2 palette. Um, if you haven't watched that, I, um, I suggest you uh, watch this video to the end and then, of course, subscribe to the channel and then go to the like profile and click the Isamaya video. And if you're in the mood of subscribing, I put down the links to my Instagram and to TikTok, where I'm um, at Instagram allogram underscore makeup and on TikTok allogram dot makeup. You should follow me there too, because I do upload a lot of stuff there. So the next product, basically the number two in the video, is a bronzer, and that is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer. And this is especially the shade Terra. I have not used the other shade, because from swatches that I saw online, Terra is way more appealing to me because the first shade is technically lighter, but it's like orange. While Terra has a nice cool undertone and I can't even put my finger on it what it is because this is probably the most simple basic bronzer that I own, but it's like the best. It's, first of all, I feel like a bad bitch when I'm wearing this and second of all, it's Tom Ford and Tom Ford just knows how to do complexion products. If you had told me in the beginning of the year that I, first of all, will have a YouTube channel and second of all, 
will film a mid-year favorites where a Bobby Brown product is one of it, I would have told you like, um, stop drinking. <laughs> that's, that's not good for your brain. But the Bobby Brown, what are they called? The Sculpt and Glow palettes. I, of course, have the light one because my skin is like low-fat milk. Um, this is awesome. You get a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer, and all three are just so beautiful. They just work together because especially the fact that the blush and the bronzer they are slightly warm, but they're not super warm, but they kind of are cohesive in their undertones. Then with this, the highlighter is Pink Glow. That is just, that is just stunning. I think Pink Glow is definitely an existing shade. You can get this as a single one, but I'm not 100% sure because I have no idea about the whole Bobbi Brown lineup. I'm so not on track with that. Um, these are quite expensive, but you get three full-size products like each pan is 4.5 grams that's a completely normal amount of product and i um i think this is around 70 euro but a lot of the times also on sale on douglas so i don't know if you can spare the extra money and if you are like okay i want to dig myself back into bobby brown because lately they've been killing it with their releases like they, they, they just, I think they brought in like mono, uh, like single eyeshadows, and I'm not a single eyeshadow person like that in a single compact, but they look very appealing to me. So the Sculpt and Glow palettes are definitely a total smash hit this year. Another thing that came out this year were the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Lip Blurs, and I have three shades of this. This is um, Rose Blur, I also have Pillow Talk Blur and Pillow Talk Medium Blur. And I also have a first impression video on these where I did not have Rose Blur because initially I ordered Nude Blur. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, I am still hurt here, like in my heart, what a, what a fucking bitch Nude Blur is because that is not nude. That's a straight up terracotta orange, so I sent it back and um, got Rose Blur, which is definitely up my vibe. Um, these are matte lipsticks without being dry, and I know that's like a claim a lot of those products do, but they are like that. And in my initial video, I compared them a lot with the Rare Beauty Lip Soufflés because the texture is very similar and they feel like they feel like air because they go on so light, they feel so light, but they stay on, like what the fuck? They stay on so nice and do not feel dry. And I have to admit, after using these for longer than only one day, um, I like them more than the Rare Beauty ones. Let's stay in the lip department and <laughs> I know I'm super late to the party, but the Natasha Denona My Dream Collection. I have the palette, I've used that palette, the palette, made the first place in my Natasha Denona powder ranking and if you want to know what the others are just you know watch this to the end and then go to the room yeah I just said it already um but I also now have the uh, lip products like I do have the lip liner the lipstick and the lip gloss and the most outstanding out of those three is actually the lipstick this shade I want to be buried in this. This is my perfect nude. While Natasha Denona this year came out with other stuff like the Yaka palette and there's one upcoming mini palette um, are not so appealing to me. <laughs> the High Glam Concealer made it to the top 30. I said it already, um, if you haven't watched that I totally understand because I did a live once on Instagram that is like over an hour long and that was when I tested this the first time and oh my god. <laughs> This is the best concealer I've ever owned. It is so smooth, it feels so good, it is so blurring, it is so awesome, it is just the best of the best. And yes, I, I say that um, knowing that I will mention two other concealers that are so close to this, like, like that, Th this, do you see that? It is, I would even say maybe it's a tie, but the other concealers are, there is just this tiny bit that is, that is missing that I love and I can't put my finger on what exactly it is, but 
This, to me, is the concealer of 2023 and probably till the rest of my life. Let's talk blushes and it's not exactly a shade, it's a whole range. I'm talking about the House Labs, what are they called? The Color Fuse blushes. And I have four of the shades. I'm still debating if I want to get the newest one. I think it's Lavender Blonde, but um, since I live in Germany and they ship from the States, um, it doesn't make sense to like order only one blush because express shipping, I think, um, is free at like 150 euro, but um, I don't have so much stuff that I want to order at House Labs. But let me just show you this one. This is Acai Sky. And, oh, isn't that the most, most pretty plum blush you've ever seen? It's, it's perfection. This, by the way, is dragon fruit base. And if that is not the most perfect cool tone blue base neon pink, I don't know what it is. They're very intense. They're very pigmented, but they are blending so easy, so effortless. Like they melt into the skin, even though they're not a cream, they're powders. And they're quite pricey. They're, I think, 46 euro each, but you get 11 grams of product, so you will never ever run out of blush. And I personally think they're absolutely worth it. In a good mid year favorites, Pat McGrath could not be missing, you know? But um, even though Pat McGrath did release some nice items this year, um, for example, the cream blush sticks, where if you remember, I got the whole collection sent. Um, go over again to the channel to see the swatches and the review and how I feel about them. Um, I don't like the blushes, but there is something else in that collection that stole my heart. And that's the Skin Fetish Highlighter. These come with two sides. You have a like colored balm and a clear balm. And, and because I like the formula so much, I got two more. Um, so this is from the blush collection. This is Cyber Lotus. And then I also got Cyber Orchid, which is a purple and the new shade. All of them are so fucking pretty. I can't. So this is um, Cyber Lotus. It's a pink with golden glitter. Then we have Cyber Orchid, and I don't even know if you can tell, but it has like a orchid uh, shift to it. And then we have Nude, which is just a white base champagne. My favorite method is to basically just smear the color side on my face, then go over it with a clear balm, and then I just blend it out with a stippling brush, and you are left with the most wonderful uh, glowing cheeks that ever to exist. But one thing to mention, like, um, you have to be into that balm highlight type um, otherwise you will not like them but I love I, I even so for today <laughs> I do have on the Tom Ford um, what are they called the Tom Ford Shade Illuminate Duos in 0 0.5 and in 0 0.5 that's a clear balm and that's my, my cream highlight today because I just love the look of it I could not do a mid-year favorites without mentioning my favorite foundation and that is the Chanel Supplemage Le Tain. this is a beast um, this is a 150 euro beast. It, it is so expensive. It's like ridiculous. Like for 150 euro, I can go grocery shopping for like one and a half weeks. But um, this foundation is so, so good. I literally want to cry. I don't know what exactly is in there that is so magic to me, but whenever I use this foundation, my skin suddenly has a f filter on it. Um, of course, it will not like hide those um, those areas where I literally have runes on the face. Like that's that's just not possible. That's not the magic here. But overall, it just evens everything out. It has the the perfect amount of coverage, the perfect amount of glow, the perfect amount of mattifying ingredients in it. It's just the absolute best foundation ever to exist. We're already at number ten, um, and. These are not testers of the Supplemage foundation. These are the concealers. Um, it's the Supplemage Le Corrector You. And um, jokes are here on me because when you see this video, I already uploaded my Get Ready With Me and why I'm on a no by now. Um, <laughs> and I said that um, everything in my head is uh, telling me that I should get the shade 02 in the Chanel Supplemage Concealer because I have shade 10 and shade 10 is too yellow blue, but it blends out to a nice one and well, again, jokes on me, I'm a fucking clown, um, I got shade 2, so that's why I'm holding up both. Um, and to be honest, they both work for me. 
That's just insane. This, the shade 2, is very, very pink based, while the shade 10 is yellow based. And both work, kind of also depending on the foundation that I use. If I use the Sublimage foundation, I can wear both, that's totally fine. But if I, for example, wear um, like the MAC Studio Fix foundation, NC10, that has quite of a strong yellow undertone, I actually think that this looks much better um, on that foundation because it's not like yellow and yellow. It, it kind of counteracts and neutralizes everything. Overall, um, there is just um, that one thing kind of missing uh, that does not make this the best concealer uh, for me, and that's the packaging. <laughs> that is clearly the packaging because this is the messiest concealer packaging you will ever see in your life. Let me just show you. It is basically like the foundation. So you um, have the, the lid and then you have a little plastic thingy on it and a lot of uh, concealer is there, there. And you have to put back the lid again, otherwise it will go rancid and dry out. Who approved that? Clearly not me and clearly not Charlotte Holcroft because she was the first one that I saw ranting about this. With the foundation it works because it's a bigger pot, but with the small concealer it's just a pain in the ass and um, that is one of the main reasons actually that this is not my top concealer. If that would have come in another in another packaging, I probably said it would be a tie with the Natasha Denona one. I want to mention another foundation that is definitely not new. I think this has been around for 10 years probably. It's the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue that I got this year. Actually not too long ago. And this is so good. Why have I been sleeping on this? This is the most natural glowing foundation I've ever used in my life. This is so awesome and it feels so light while it has a very very high coverage like i can slather this on my face and skip concealer to be honest because it just covers everything and the last two things i want to mention are eyeshadow palettes um you probably said oh why didn't you mention eyeshadow palettes because best for last and the surprise brand of 2023 for me is an indie brand it's glass guards you should follow me on instagram because i have done videos with all of these palettes already I cannot tell you how awesome these palettes are. Let me just show you my favorite out of them all. And that is the Color of Rain palette that came out in their latest collection. And let me just... So I did on my Instagram and TikTok looks with this palette or like one look or two looks. I'm not sure about it, but I don't care. But it doesn't matter, but I did looks with that. Um, and I said it there. The idea of having 11 multi-chrome shades and then one black that you can use as a base or that you can use like on half of your eye and then tap one of these shades uh, on top and because of the black base it will transform everything is so fucking clever. This palette, if you, if you want to get one, one item from Glass Gods, get this one. It just surprised me so much with the quality. And I think each of these palettes is around 40 euro. It's a Swedish indie brand, so if you live in the EU, it's like even better because you have no duties, no taxes, no whatever. And they do ship quite fast. You have the option to pay a bit extra for um, express shipping, which I always did. And um, for example, I ordered on a Sunday and on Tuesday it was already here. And number 13, and I know I said it's not a particular order, but I have to say that this palette is the favorite or like the best release ever. I want to be bold and I say that this is the best palette release in the past two to three years. It's the Isamaya Industrial 2. Even for today's look I use that. I cannot put my finger on what exactly that is that just sucks me into this. Is it the texture? Is it the, the whole shade composition? I did a very deep dive onto Isamaya Beauty and you should definitely watch that because I talked so much about the brand and why I'm so obsessed with her, like Isamaya French and the brand. And this palette is just, it's incredibly good. You know, and if you have Industrial One, I can see why so many people didn't like that. There are two shades in there that I'm like, I wish they're not in there, but she, 
she did herself a favor and did not include this putty formula here and this is like the lighter sister to industrial one and this is so just by looking at this looking at the color story at the whole family at the whole at the different textures that this has gets me so inspired it's insane and now it's your turn tell me what are the like the best products that have been released this year for you so far and do you like that because i um, i'm not a fan actually of monthly favorites um i think they can be really repetitive and boring so i thought um let's do half your favorites and then we will do end of the year favorites of course but thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one